Hey guys, it's been a little while, but uh, I'm back here. The strike actually uh, concluded, and uh, classes are back in session now. Um, after three weeks, they finally announced an agreement, and classes started uh, on the 3rd, Monday, and today's Friday, Friday the 7th. It's kind of interesting and uh, kind of frustrating uh, when you uh, look at the details of uh, the strike and how they eventually resolved it. Because what happened was, throughout the whole three weeks of the strike, uh, about two and a half weeks weren't actually negotiating. The first two and a half weeks were the profs, you know, picketing outside around town and stuff, and the university just, I guess, kind of sitting there scratching their heads, I don't know. But uh, they weren't actually negotiating for like the first two or two and a half weeks of the strike. And uh, what happened was, uh, two weeks into the strike, the provincial government ordered everyone to start negotiating. And they said they were going to bring in a mediator to help, you know, get an agreement going. Uh, so what happened was, the third Monday of the strike, uh, they started negotiating, and I guess things didn't really go anywhere too terribly fast. So on that Wednesday, they brought in a mediator, got the whole thing solved that same day. I can't believe it. They strike for two and a half weeks, finally bring in an outside mediator, and they get it done the same day. Holy cow, this thing could have been fixed without a strike at all if they had done that in the first place. What also frustrates me, just because I don't get why uh, it is at all, uh, but what frustrates me is, in the beginning, the teachers wanted a raise of something like 26% over four years. The university was uh, willing to give them 9% over four years. But what they've concluded on now was 5% over two years, and then the uh, third and fourth years will be determined later. So uh, the only thing that's set in stone is 5%, less than what the university was willing to give them in the first place. And yet the teachers union voted 90% in favor of that. I mean, my god, if they were going to settle for that, why didn't they just take the 9% in the first place? Or maybe the university offered them even more before the strike while they were negotiating. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I think this whole thing has just gone way silly. But, uh, I'm back here now. Classes resumed Monday. We had our first full week of classes in three weeks today. Only the second week of classes. And, uh, yeah, I think finally things are starting to return to some sort of normalcy. Things aren't going to be the way they were because, first of all, they have taken away our March break. There will be no March break. March break will be used for classes. They have announced that there will be no tests or assignments due during March break, but classes will be held, so I will be here during March break. Another thing is, and this kind of worries me, uh, the semester usually ends on April 27th, one day before my 20th birthday this year, but uh, they've extended the semester until April the 30th. Uh, this is kind of a problem for me because my lease on this place culminates on April the 28th, my birthday. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm supposed to be out of here two days before the semester's over. Um, and of course, I'll be having exams during then, so I really, I absolutely cannot be worrying about, you know, where the hell I'm going to live while I need to be studying for exams and stuff. So I've got to uh, I've got to email my landlord and uh, talk to her about that and see what's going to happen. Um, if it turns out I really can't stay here till the 30th, I'll figure something out, go in a hotel or whatever. Um, I've been told that you can actually get the university to uh, pay for uh, a place to stay uh, if exam period runs over time of your lease. Another problem is the exam period is usually 10 or 12 days, I forget which. But uh, they've also shortened the exam period to only eight days. And uh, I have five exams that into eight days. Um, I have a bad feeling, although I don't know when my exams are yet. I have a bad feeling I'm going to possibly have more than one exam on the same day. 
uh, which isn't a terribly common thing, especially for something like engineering, when they normally, you know, set the exam so they're spaced really nicely apart, but of course this whole strike has messed the entire schedule up, so uh, uh, there could be some uh, weird things happening with the exam schedule. But uh, I'm one of, what, 10,000 students that are affected by this, so... Uh, I'll get through it any way I have to. Something that kind of surprises me though, but uh, is nice nonetheless, is that uh, they actually announced yesterday they're going to reimburse uh, every full-time student $200 at least. Uh, they say that the wording is over $200. They're going to refund to each student in return for uh, the time lost due to the strike, so that's kind of nice. But anyway, um, it was nice to uh, uh, get a break home still. Uh, kind of made up for my less than stellar Christmas break where three days of it was a little power and then the rest of it was moping over my marks. I managed to uh, upload six videos over the three week time span. That was pretty good. Uh, my video of the RCA VCR is getting quite good review. A lot of people enjoyed it. I am happy for that. I, I think I'm definitely going to be buying a belt kit for that thing. I'm still on the fence of whether or not to get the pinch roller. I'm, I haven't even looked at how to possibly replace the pinch roller. But uh, yeah, I'll figure that out sometime. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Uh, probably won't be till the summertime that I get to actually doing that. But uh, I've still got a lot of stuff uh, in the works, uh, a lot of video ideas. So uh, whenever's the next time I get home, which possibly won't be until the summertime, I've got a, a lot of stuff that I can film. Somebody asked me if, uh, a couple weeks ago if I can make an update video on the Compact Presario 5360, and uh, the answer is yes, I will do that. In fact, I'll do better than that. I, uh, I will make a video uh, an update video on all of the computers, just one big update video. And uh, it's the very least I can do for you guys since I don't really make computer videos anymore. I haven't acquired any new computers, that's why there's nothing to film computer wise anymore. Unless it's just video of my vintage computers running more software, but uh, anyway, there's the story on that. Something else that's in the works is, uh, geez, what a time right after I get back to school that this pops up, but uh, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, I got an email. Um, you know how, how on eBay you can save searches, uh, you can search for something and save it. So if that something happens to pop up, they'll send you an email telling you that uh, an item related to what you're searching for has popped up. Well, for four years now, almost four years, I have had saved in my searches an incredibly rare, very incredibly rare, vintage electronic device. I'm not going to give any hints as to what it is, but an uh, incredibly very, very rare vintage electronic device. I've had it saved in my eBay searches for four years. A couple of days ago, very first one to ever come up in four years has appeared. Someone's selling one, broken but probably fixable, really excellent price. Um, someone has already bid on it, but uh, I'm keeping watch on it. I'm hoping I might be able to nab it. Because, uh, man, it's a really awesome uh, piece of equipment. I've wanted one for years, and this is the first one that has showed up in almost four years uh, that I've had it in my safe searches. So uh, I'm keeping an eye on that once in a while, and uh, I'm hoping I might be able to nab that. Another thing that happened uh, during my time home, here you see one of my two... 1974 General Electric F15 T8CW fluorescent lamps. Um, two of my most prized uh, fluorescent lamps. But uh, unfortunately, to my dismay, uh, that is no more. I only have one of these lamps now, this one. Uh, over uh, the strike break, uh, I had a little accident and I broke the other one. The other one was in my 15 watt rapid start fluorescent strip light. I had it set on the floor while I was rearranging some things and stupidest thing ever, really stupid thing happened. What happened was I uh, also had my headphones on the floor and of course these Sony headphones which by the way are still working awesome after a year. Of course they got this big heavy metal plug on them. Well my headphones were sitting on the floor and uh, I went to pick them up. And usually how I pick them up, you know, I, I grab the end, I grab the cord, I grab the headphones. 
Well, when I went to pick them up, the end of the cord slipped out of my hand. And let me tell you, this big metal heavy uh, end of the cord went right on the lamp, put a perfect round circular hole right through my 1974 GE fluorescent lamp. Oh man, I was so disappointed in that. Very angry at myself for that, but oh well, it's just a thing. Not even a very special or important thing in the in the long run, but uh, yeah, that kind of disappointed me. And uh, yeah, it's too bad, because see that lamp, that's got quite a bit of use on it now, because that's the one I always use. It's starting to show signs of wear. Whereas the other lamp that broke, uh, I hardly ever used it, so it still looked like new. So uh, yeah, kind of disappointed, but uh, what are you going to do? Oh well. Well, that's pretty much all I got for uh, updates, I think. So uh, I think now, finally, after a month, uh, we'll take a look at the courses I have this semester. I got a haircut too. But uh, here's what my schedule looks like this semester. I have four courses. Um, normally I would have five, but if uh, you may remember, uh, I didn't pass my electric circuits, so I couldn't take the next course. Um, according to my friends who are taking that course, the next course is extremely hard. So uh, if you didn't do good in the first course, the second course was just going to obliterate you. And as a matter of fact, uh, my professor for the first course, Electric Circuits, told me the same thing. So let's see what I got here. Starting off at the uh, top left, uh, Monday morning here, we have Math 3503, which is called Differential Equations for Engineers. This is basically the successor to the calculus class I had last semester and uh, seems to be doing pretty good so far. Next, uh, something a bit new, st Statistics 2593, which is called Probability and Statistics for Engineers. Um, we haven't done too much in this class yet, but it seems interesting so far. And uh, luckily, a lot of what we've done so far, um, I already knew, because in grade 10 or 11 math, uh, we actually had a probability and statistics unit. So uh, I already have a bit of knowledge in that. But uh, yeah, that class seems to be going pretty good so far. Um, I do have one electrical and computer engineering course still, EC 2412, and it's called Simulation and Analysis for Engineers. This class is actually basically the successor to a class I had in my very first semester of university, CS 1003, Computer Science 1003, which you may remember that was the class where we learned the uh, programming language MATLAB, the really high level uh, programming language. This course is basically the successor to that and uh, it teaches us uh, basically more advanced MATLAB stuff and uh, you learn to use MATLAB to do stuff like uh, uh, error estimation and all that sort of stuff. And then finally down here we have APSC 2023. APSC means Applied Science and the name of the course is, it's really long so I couldn't fit it all in here, it's called A Survey of 19th and 20th Century Physics for Engineers. And when I first read this, I thought, well, what the heck is that supposed to mean? I mean, what's it mean by a survey? You know, you do surveys, you know, to tell websites how much they suck. But basically, uh, the survey part means that in this class, we learn a bunch of different physics topics, but we only go a little bit into each of them because we wouldn't have enough time to cover all of them in depth. So we just do a survey of them, and that's what it means. This class is basically the successor to the physics class I had in my very first semester. And uh, yeah, that's the four courses. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I get done at 12.30, uh, which I've never gotten out of school that early before, so that's kind of interesting. I have one tutorial up here uh, for calculus. Um, actually an optional tutorial, but I will be going to it all the time. Luckily, there's no weekly quizzes like uh, I had in my calculus uh, last semester. That was a pain in the butt. All we do in this tutorial is we solve uh, example problems, which that's really, really nice. A good way to uh, solidify what you're learning in the lecture class. So yeah, that's pretty nice. And you may notice, that's the only thing in my Tuesday, so uh, it's kind of a bummer to have to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning to go to one class and be done at a... Uh, done at 9.30. Um, same for Wednesday, except down here we have a lab, APSC 2028, which is the lab 
for the physics course and the reason it's a different course number is because it's actually optional if you're not in electrical engineering uh, obviously for electricals it is uh, required we've had one lab so far and uh, it went all right you know you do experiments play with equipment and stuff and uh, you use equations and calculations to demonstrate mathematically the stuff the equipment is doing and things like that our first experiment was pretty fun because we got to play with uh, the only way I can describe it physically, it was like a big round light bulb, um, although it wasn't a light bulb, but what it was, it was a big round uh, tube uh, with a little filament in one end that emitted electrons when it was heated up. Actually, there was a tiny bit of an amount of mercury in it, so you could consider it a form of a mercury vapor lamp, but uh, the filament would emit le electrons, which could be visible as a blue mercury beam, and uh, this bulb was housed in these around these big uh, electromagnetic coils and what you did was you adjusted the current going through the electromagnetic coils and the the coils the magnetic field emitted by the coils actually shaped the mercury discharge inside of the bulb so that was pretty cool you'd adjust the current and uh, the beam inside of the bulb would go yeah you'd curl right around so uh, that was pretty cool and uh, there were markers inside the bulb, so what we had do, to do was adjust the current, the uh, magnetic field current, s until the beam lined up with each of those markers and measure the current uh, going through the coils to make the beam go to each of those markers and uh, you do calculations from there and stuff. The whole point of the experiment was to find the charge over mass ratio of an electron and to calculate the mass of an electron. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting, you know, a long three hours, yeah, but uh, not entirely dry, boring stuff, so that's good. On my Thursday, I have the lab for my uh, ECE course, and that's the only thing I have on Thursdays, and it starts on 1 o'clock, so that's kind of nice, get to catch up on my sleep a little bit more. And then Friday, the uh, same four courses, so, uh, yeah, that's what my schedule looks like for uh, this semester. Um, I'm kind of glad because, you know, it gives me a bit more time to work on homework and stuff. And uh, I really, I really want to take advantage of that. I, I want to do great in everything this semester. I really want to get me back up to where I was. And finally, before I go, I just want to put out a little PSA, a little public service announcement, and uh, let it be known that I have not been asked to do this, or uh, and I'm not getting paid or anything like that. I'm doing this just out of the goodness of my heart. Um, there's this uh, video series on here on YouTube that I really, really enjoy, and uh, I just want to... Uh, let you guys be aware of it because uh, I'd really like to see him get more popular and uh, I have a feeling there's probably at least a few of you that would probably enjoy it but uh, it's called Dumbass Dinosaurs and uh, what it is it's, it's sort of a uh, a crude cartoon uh, type thing um, it's not really animated uh, it's, it's just static pictures mostly but uh, it's a series featuring a bunch of, well, dumbass dinosaurs that uh, deal with, you know, modern, I guess, modern situations and stuff like that. But uh, I think it's really, really funny. It's uh, filled with really crude humor, uh, which I'm uh, always a fan of. And uh, if you like crude humor and stuff like that, you'll probably like this. But it's pretty funny. You got the dinosaurs, which have been pretty well drawn, you know, a cartoony style, but it looks pretty good. And uh, they have voices that have been provided by a text-to-speech a text -to program called Speakonia. And uh, it's pretty funny. But uh, it's kind of hard to describe because it's so different. But uh, what I'll do at the end of this video is uh, I'll put a couple of clips uh, from a couple of the episodes here. Uh, just so you can get a basic idea of what it's like. But uh, yeah, I really, really enjoy it. I, I accidentally found the channel through another channel. And I've been subscribed for a couple of months now, and uh, I really love it. When I subscribed, they only had like 80 subscribers. Now they have 300. And uh, I'd really, really like to see them get uh, more, because I think they really deserve it. But uh, yeah, I say head on over. There's the uh, URL, just dumbass dinosaurs. And uh, take a look at it. So, uh, that's pretty much it for my uh, update video. My camera's certainly decided that it's time to go, so I think I'll say that too. So, thanks for listening, guys, and uh, I'll see you later.
K nine nine dot trans X auto V. Holy refusal! Finally. Wait a minute. Ah. Uh, this isn't Grand Theft Auto V, this is Grand Theft Auto IV. What if you went back to GameStop and returned GTA IV and bought TAV? Uh, I can't. Why? I'm not allowed back into the store, because I urinated all over the floor, because I was so excited to play GTA V.